so how to make one of those hockey pucks is you pour the those little flakes uh, I mean not plate the pellets in there uh, or hot hot plates rather dirty today and you do a specific amount which this is 10 grams so that's 0.3 grams of graphene right there and because I'm doing a 3% mix and then what you'll do is you'll heat it up and once it starts getting all mushy and ready to go you pour that stuff into there and when you pour that into there of course I'm doing it in a hood vent you guys can see uh, when you pour that into there then you'll uh, start folding it over and over and over kind of like the old ninja swords and stuff uh, uh, we're starting to see some smoke so that means that at least it's somewhere near that temperature sprinkle this stuff in you can see 0.3 grams of graphene is a lot of volume but it's not not that much actually in reality so then I'm going to just move this around a little bit so that it kind of disperses so you don't have uh, you know, just a clump of graphene in the center now now let's see if I can do this right then you start folding it over you can see how it's like sticky 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 and it'll it'll start like folding itself in Kind of like a how you do a sauce or something like that, and then then I take this Erlenmeyer with water in it because it's a cold surface and it won't stick. So then you just mash it, mash it. What will happen here? Is you get a flat little pan of this material. Starts uh, melting together, and now that it's really thin, it'll accelerate its melt you know, because there's less mass between the pan and the air. And you, you understand that the whole quasi-scientific explanation, right? I'm going to turn the heat down just a hair. This uh, our unit is very, very, very good. And you see, move that around starting to do that that's what it does it'll get a little sticky you can see it's like kind of quasi burning a little bit here normally I have two hands and I'm holding the pan get that off and smash it again all to stick together because really the key here is dispersion um, and that's why I'll fold it a bunch of times and I highly do not recommend doing this at your home uh, because the fumes from this plastic are not fun let's just say that right now Flatter the better, then it's easier to fold. Pretty soon it will fold nice and neatly. Aha, yeah, this is this is like the stuff that you want. Come on. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, so it comes out all tacky, almost like road tar. Press it. Ah. Fold it over again. Sorry if I if I'm concentrating on this rather than the video. Press it. Fold it again. Press and fold. Press and fold. Hold on, I'm gonna squish it out really good so that it gets a lot more area and more chances of folds 
because if you don't fold it out really good, once again, you're gonna turn that heat down just a little bit. It's nice and hot, that pan is real good and hot. Fold it, and you know what, I'm gonna double fold this. There we go. Squish it out again. Fold it. doing this over and over and over and over again. And you can see how wide this is. That fold. We're going to fold it again this way. We're going to press it again. A little turn doesn't hurt either. Fold again. Now this is what kind of like what a twin screw extruder does, which is actually our next experiment. We're actually going and actually getting our hands on a real live twin screw extruder to to do this with a lot of material, and then then that's when our friends at uh, Local Motors will uh, take over and do all the material science testing because really I don't have all the scientific equipment to do so. You know, we won't see stress, strain, and, and uh, strength related tests and fracture tests and all that. But we just won't see that uh, here at the CBE because we're not a material science college. <laughs> That's actually the best answer of all time. Because we're not actually in material science. Ah, I'm doing this really thin one because I want to get it about two millimeters thick. Because I do have a little piece of stainless steel that I can quite, quite get a close read on. All right, so now that's off. And uh, the next video will be testing of this little pancake right here. All right, now, this little, I already broke it once, okay, but it was a really thin piece. But that's not the point. Here's that little thin, it was, it's literally paper thin, that spot. But I knew that because that was an inner fold. But this is stainless steel. This is the material. Uh, that we made. This weighs 58 grams, right? Right, Mark? Yeah. I didn't see the scale when you made it. Oh, okay. Well, Mark's not going to vouch for me. And this weighs 10 grams. Um, but this has got an area of like double, so strength of weight. Anyway, but that's not the point. This. You got that? And you just bend it like that. I had to get a grip on it. Do the same thing with this. <coughs> and it took significantly more effort to break that plate than it did this. In fact, earlier I had, if you can see, it's like zigzag because I bent it earlier uh, with by hand. You know, this was in my in my left hand that's holding the camera, and then this was in the other hand, and I couldn't break it. Uh, I just had to put a whole lot more effort to break that then bend that so that's kind of neat of course this breaks it doesn't just bend and deform so that that's the difference but that's stainless steel that's uh, uh, was it 303 or whatever the heck it is I mean, it, it's the real deal and and then that right there is the the material that we're working with and uh, we'll get real results, real scientific results. I already talked to the guys. And uh, we'll, we'll actually see some real stress strain curves and things like that. But just, just the idea that this stuff could be so strong is really, 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 really neat. There you go.